May 16th, 2024, May 16th, 2024 May 16th, 2024, Town Board meeting to order. Ms. Marco, please call the roll. Mr. Dodson. Present. Mr. Mastriani. Present. Mrs. Gallucci. Present. Mr. Schlag. Present. And Mrs. Collins. Present. Five present. Thank you, Ms. Marco. The quorum is present. Will you please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance? And Mrs. Gallucci, will you lead us? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For anyone who has not attended a town board meeting and wishes to speak uh, under privilege of the floor, I ask that you sign uh, the sign-in sheet that's located, <coughs> excuse me, allergies, by the door. <clears throat> if you do not sign the sheet, you will not be able to speak. Um, and I will ask Ms. Marco to pick uh, to not pick it up until after the presentation tonight. And tonight we do have a special presentation, and I will let Mrs. Gallucci and Mr. Mastriani go from here. Okay. So, um, no. No. If, uh, if we can get in front here. Um, a year and a half ago, relatively new on the town board, um, you know, was witnessing a lot of solar development in our town. Um, one project in particular that's gotten a lot of attention on the top of uh, Yantapuchaburg Mountain uh, was creating a lot of distress. And uh, through that process, uh, got to meet um, a few people, uh, a, few, a bunch of people here, uh, particularly Patty Madelitz and, and Kim Scannell. Um, and uh, I want to honor them tonight. I also want to honor all the members of the Energy Committee that we formed uh, to take on the task of, of writing new solar code. And I want the public to know uh, what their citizen action has produced and what their energy and feelings and frustrations channeled in the, in the proper direction were in, were able to achieve, and uh, not just Patty and, and, and Kim, uh, you know, the, the leaders of the committee, um, but every single person on the committee has been extraordinary. Uh, a very diverse group, people with lots of skills and lots of uh, lots of effort put into this to this process, and um, so I would just like to bring everybody up one at a time. Uh, you can hand me these and uh, like to just kind of remark about the, the, the work that everybody did. Uh, I'll start with Patty. Um, Patty, you come on. Um, Patty is the chairman of the Energy Committee and uh, has, uh, has set the tone for the work that the committee has done has kept us organized, has led by example, and with, with her, her great spirit, entertaining um, very carefully everybody's thoughts and concerns and input and uh, keeping us on track. And uh, I, I often say, and I can't say it enough, that you know th this is a volunteer committee and just the, the power that we have as citizens we don't realize especially when we come together, but uh, what, what Patty has been able to do in, um, in, in, in setting that example to, to those that know her, and hopefully many beyond, in, in how, how we can affect change in our local government. I just wanted to give you this proclamation honoring you, and uh, here you go. Thank you. <laughs> Kimberly Ricker. Kim, come on up. <laughs> Kim, is, uh, Kim is our MVP. Uh, Kim, is, Kim is extraordinary. Um, she's committed tremendously to very hard tasks, and she gives it her all. She incorporates everybody into the process, and she's been able to see through many late nights, the proper language and way to put things that uh, I think has produced a tremendous code 
that I hope that other municipalities throughout New York State take as a backbone. And um, Kim, I, I can't say enough. You're extraordinary. Thank you. Thank you so much. Renee Mertens. Renee, come on up. Renee and I actually have known each other before we formed this committee together and was kind of one of the first people that I thought should belong on this committee because I know how well informed she is, how intelligent she is, and um, you know how committed and, and thorough she is into the minutia of what's going on. And uh, your, your presence on the committee has been, has been extraordinary and uh, your presence just in general is extraordinary. So thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Here you go. Uh, Dave Bills. Dave, come on up. Dave. A lot of people know Dave. Yeah. Dave. <laughs> Dave the token is, uh, old guy. <laughs> well, you know, Dave, Dave is a great example of a, a citizen involved in the community, not afraid to step into issues, knows what's going on, has a lot of experience. That's a nice way of saying that. Yeah, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, your, your, your contribution to, to this code process and to the committee has been extraordinary. Your commitment to the process, your, your insight, is we've, we've leaned on tremendously. So thank you very much, Dave. Oh, thank you. Dan Brudos is not here, unfortunately. Um, Dan is a, is a firefighter, um, and Dan also just recently has been in the process of putting a, a 10 acres solar array on his land. So he's very familiar with the process and his <coughs> understanding of from the beginning to where he's at with his project now has been very useful to our committee in understanding exactly what's going on. And Dan has always had a fresh and, and great crisp insight into things that maybe the group isn't thinking at the time. Um, so, Dan, we'll get this to you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. <laughs> JD Claremont. JD is the other firefighter on our committee. So, a, a, a servant in, in many ways. And, uh, JD's contribution and, and insight into our committee and, and his involvement has been extraordinary. And we love having you and, and thank you very much for all your work along this journey here. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Calvin Rugg. <laughs> Cal. Yeah, Cal, go, Cal lives across the street, so he may have just gone across the street. Um, he had soccer? Okay. Cal, Cal has been, I, I keep using this word extraordinary, but if that's what you take away from this committee and this solar code that this committee helped create, then, you know, it's, it's extraordinary. Um, Cal has been above and beyond in everything that, that is going on, has been taking on great projects, been taking the load of a lot of things, a lot of things. He, he's an architect, he has a, he has a comprehensive vision and understanding, he, he processes a lot of information, and uh, you know, we, we, we love him, and thank you, Cal. <laughs> also, Bruce Boniquist. Um, Bruce is not here tonight, uh, many people know Bruce. Bruce is extraordinary too. I keep using that word. <laughs> Bruce is on the Zoning Board of Appeals. He's on the Conservation Advisory Committee. Uh, he is a servant, and just like so many other people on uh, on this committee that have stepped up and, in, and gotten involved in this this process. You know, Bruce is Bruce sets that example in his life, and and um, he's always contributing and has so much insight and so much experience to offer and has been uh, a tremendous asset in the process of uh, hammering out this solar code. So, Bruce Boniquist, thank you very much. Thank you, guys. And I just wanted to say that 
you know, when we sit through these meetings, I'm so impressed because we are we are not against solar. We, we're huge fans of, of the proper energy and the proper time and place. So um, what I love seeing every meeting is just such a balanced approach. And, you know, just everybody is, uh, is just so open to new ideas and to doing the right thing. So when, when we look at our, our residents, I mean, you know, they, ex they expect that of us. And I, I do believe that this board and the committees work very hard. Um, I've never seen so much hard work go into committees. So, you know, we have liaisons, Joe McGlucci oh, back there. He comes in. Um, <laughs> he definitely brings information back to, to his team. And, um, and so I, I think, you know, it's, it's very fair. It's very balanced. I love the fact that the firemen are with us. I, um, I am so appreciative for all the hard work that you all put in. People have no idea what these committees do. I mean, we're late at night, um, really involved in, in all energy en entities, and I really do appreciate that. So, um, and Joe, thank you. Because you're the reason this entire committee started. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, I, and I want to thank you, Terry and Joe. You, you guys have been involved since the beginning, and, and your support and, and this process, and the board's support as well, has been has been terrific. And I know it's it's taken a while. We've had to extend the moratorium a few times, but really proud of the project, the, the product that that you guys have helped put together. And uh, you know, I, I really hope that the, this example that you set in your lives as just citizens being involved, caring about your community. And rolling up your sleeves and getting involved and seeing seeing things happen is uh, is tremendous. It's inspiring to me. It's inspiring to a lot of us, and and we're we're just very thankful to have you guys. Thank you. Good job. We'll now move on to privilege of the floor. Ms. Marco, is there anyone who wishes to speak? I'll remind everybody that if you'll give me a glance one in a while, once in a while, at three and a half minutes, I'll raise my hand, and then at four minutes, I'll just lightly tap the gavel so that you know your time is up. Dave Bills? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Um, first of all, I'd like to say the guys are doing a great job on this building. The meeting room here is just very impressive. So, now the bad part. Uh, last meeting at Rotterdam Junction, uh, I agreed with about 90% of what Dan Cole said. I disagree with the third well. We got five wells in District 5 to provide water for 12,000 people. We got two wells in <coughs> Rotterdam Junction that only provide water for 800 people. Um, I know that's not apples to apples because you got different sized wells. I understand all that. I also have worked on Rotterdam Junction Water for since 1980 through uh, 78. I've been working on Rotterdam Junction we, when we maintained it ourselves. Uh, there was two spots for the wells to be drilled originally, and then when they drilled the second well, it was tested two spots, and they were drilled there the two that are there because of the recovery rate. The recovery rate there is uh, tremendous. That's why SI just drilled a 14-inch main there for their firefighting at the, at the plant. Uh, they have other wells further down towards SI real close, and they don't have a recovery rate that the ones do right next to the firehouse there. Um, our biggest expense in Rotterdam Junction is maintenance. And as, you, as Rotterdam Board is the director and main uh, managers of our water district, that is our highest cost. Now, if you put another well in a different location, you just multiplied our maintenance cost. Because now you've got that guy stopping at two places every day. Um, 
I, I just don't, I, I don't see the rationality to it. The rest of it's very good. Uh, people don't understand what the cost of water is. If you've lived on a well like I had for almost 15 years, turning on that faucet and have water come out is worth thousands of dollars. Um, I just disagree with that part of the thing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jim Schaefer. Well, first of all, I uh, my name is Jim Schaefer. I live on 39 Scammerhorn Road. And as you know, I'm town historian and also a member of the Conservation Advisory Committee. I rise today to speak only for myself. And I hesitate to say anything because what I'm going to talk about is the remarkable ordinance that has been drafted. And I'm so much, so impressed with it and so proud of all the people that worked on it, know them all, and it's fantastic. Uh, overall, a fantastic piece of work. I do have four minor suggestions. Well, I'm not all that minor, but one is pretty significant to me. The first one is section seven, general under general requirements, landscaping and screening. All of the language in the ordinance is handicapped by the fact that the prior language and uh, is all assuming a level or nearly level solar array. We know from the experience recently that the solar array that everyone is concerned about in Western Rotterdam is on a mountain. Mm -hmm. And so having a slope and having a hillside makes it difficult, almost impossible, to really significantly screen that array from any kind of visual on roadway or residence. <coughs> so I simply suggest that in the future, uh, restricting solar arrays to level or nearly <coughs> level sites, or removed at least 200 or more feet, as stated in the ordinance, will help. Second point, section seven, general requirements. Q, slope, page 16. My question is, is the, is the guidance restricting placement to no greater than 15% a mean value or average calculation for a quarter acre, or any 15% slope found in the entire development? This is pretty significant, because it's very easy to have a steep slope in part of the array and average out less than 15%. To me, guidance should not allow any application that has a 15% or greater slope anywhere in the site. Perhaps that is what is stated in this regulation, but slopes should not be averaged. Third point, section 10, the third tier three solar energy system permitting requirements on page 22. Deforestation, this is my big bugaboo. Clear cutting destroys life-giving vegetation. Scientific studies estimate that one mature tree produces 250 liters of oxygen, captures 75 grams of carbon, and transpires 100 gallons of water every single day. Removal of any mature tree needs to be weighed carefully regarding this energy cost to a presumed, presumed project benefit. My suggestion, all mature trees greater than six inches depth at breast height should not be waived by the Planning Commission without an energy cost benefit analysis. In my opinion, if trees are removed, they should be replaced at a one-to-one -one ratio with a three-inch DBH depth at breast height sapling, not nursery stock, not bare root stock that we get in a nursery, a little shrub. That's nothing. It takes 30 or 40 years for that to become a mature tree. <coughs> Put in a sapling. I'm sorry, Mr. Schaefer. I, I respect everything that you're saying, but I try to keep everybody fair. Sure, to keep absolutely. Them. I have handouts. Thank Number you. four. It's easy to read. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Not going there. Brenda DeRosian. Brenda, write it in. A um, couple of things. Um, at the last meeting, <coughs> I didn't write any of this stuff down. But at the last meeting, Mr. Dobson made sure to tell the people in the junction and who's listening on YouTube that District Water District 5 is paying the lowest amount of money uh, for our water tax, We're down to like $89. Uh, but Mr. Dobson forgot to say that the reason why our bill's gone down from 100 and something to 89 was because this board, this the, 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 the employees of this town, made a major, major error last year of 4,000 plus users, which is a big, big deal. But for some reason, you people do not feel that uh, you need to acknowledge that number as to why, because we overpaid. We overpay. Granted, we're not paying the way um, the junction is. I got that. And I asked when the junction's bill went as high as it went, I asked why? Why? And um, I didn't get any response from anybody on this board, except for the two new ones. You know, I'll, I'll excuse you guys. No response. You could say, this is why we had it almost triple their bill down at the junction. Then uh, with the um, uh, water funding, Mr. Dobson once again, and it was in the paper, so you can't say you didn't say it. You didn't. You didn't. You didn't say. It. If the project, if you do not get the five million dollar we grant from the state, that that project is not going to go through. They will owe nothing. <clears throat> and you said that you are. This board is going to go after grants for that for that district. Not for district, water district number five, because we're not paying anything. They're paying the highest. So basically the ten, the fourteen thousand plus in district five don't matter. Despite the fact that this board applied for two grants at five million each and didn't get it. So you said, Mr. Dobson, if they don't get the if you don't get the grant for, for um, the junction. They owe nothing. So why does it not hold for um, Water District 5? You, you, you applied for two grants, two grants, you got nothing. So why are you going, why are you pursuing this project? Where is the money go coming from for, district, for the people in District 5? I'm getting phone calls. I'm getting phone calls from people that live in District 5. They're calling me. What's going on? How much am I going to pay? You know, I, I, you know, I, 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 I don't have any money. I got to start budgeting. And I'm sitting there going, I don't know. And I know what you're going to say in miscellaneous. I know what you're going to say in miscellaneous. They can call us. They can email us. And I mentioned that. And you know what they say? I'm not going to do that because they don't trust anybody on this board to give them the right answer. You, I smirk. I love when you smirk. I really do. The other thing which is a political move I'm, uh, as far as I'm concerned. Motel 8, all of a sudden, there, all of a sudden there's safety issues in Motel 8. They've been there since last July and yesterday. It's inhabitable. And if this isn't a political move, Mr. Mastriani, because it's six months out from election, then you tell me it isn't. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Tracy Lemanic. I'm Tracy Lamnack. I live at 813 Crawford Road, and I own the, most of the land that adjoins the proposed solar farm. Uh, first of all, I want to commend the committee for doing a monumental job here. It looks like uh, if I were a solar farm developer, I, I wouldn't want to come to Rotterdam. <laughs> uh, but I also want to say that I resent not being involved in this because of the degree to which 
it affects me. I came here mainly tonight for information. Uh, I wasn't aware even of this uh, draft resolution until last night when I exchanged uh, text messages with Dr. Schaefer. Uh, it's taken me a long time to try to digest very much of it, and I haven't gotten very far on it. Uh, I also resent my neighbors treating me like dirt, thinking that I'm participating in uh, hel helping to facilitate the advancement of that solar farm. Uh, I haven't yet signed any paperwork. I need to discuss it with people. And I'm hoping that I will get back in, in being involved, or being disinvolved or disinvited from their committee meetings. Uh, I, I was on the mailing list and was removed from the mailing list because of nasty rumors brought on by a couple of my neighbors who irrationally were really annoyed at me without knowing the facts. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. That's it, Molly. Since no one else signed up, I'm closing uh, the first to the floor and we'll move on to resolutions. Our first resolution is Resolution 215 of the year 2024. The clerk will read. To recognize the introduction of introductory local law blank of 2024 to amend <coughs> Chapters 270 zoning of the town code to repeal the existing solar energy facilities law and related site plan fees and for the adoption of an updated solar energy facilities law declare lead agency and referring same to the Planning Commission for report and recommendation. Okay. Is there any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Motion by Mr. Mastriani. Do I have a second? I'll second the motion. Second by Mrs. Gulucci. On the question, clerk will call the roll. Mr. Dawson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. Mrs. Gulucci? Yes. Mr. Schwab? Yes. Mrs. Cl Mrs. Collins? Yes. Five yes. Resolution passes. Our next resolution is Resolution 216 of the year 2024. The clerk will read. To call for a public hearing on the proposed introductory local law blank of 2024 to amend Chapter 270 zoning of the town code to repeal the existing solar energy facilities law, Local 1 of the year 2017, and related site plan fees, Chapter 270-137.1A1, and for the adoption of an updated solar energy facility law. Okay, is there any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Motion by Mr. Mastriani. Do I have a second? I'll second the motion. Second by Mrs. Gallucci. On the question, clerk will call the roll. Mr. Dawson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. Mrs. Gallucci? Yes. Mr. Schwab? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Five yes. Resolution passes. Our next resolution is Resolution 217 of the year 2024. The clerk will read. A resolution in connection with the Town of Rotterdam, Rotterdam Junction Water Districts 3 and 4 Water System Improvements Project determination of non-significance pursuant to the State Environmental Quality Review Act, Seeker, Regulation 6 NYCRR, Part 7, 617. Is there any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Motion by Mr. Dodson. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Mastriani. On the question? The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Dodson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. Mrs. Gallucci? Yes. Mr. Schwab? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Um, yes, and I would like to enter into the record that we are um, reversing the uh, other resolution that we did uh, last uh, week, actually. Voiding it. And voiding uh, And voiding it. <coughs> Our next resolution is Resolution 218 of the year 2024. The clerk will read. A resolution authorized the issuance of an 8,600,000 serial bonds of the town of Rotterdam, Schenectady County, New York, to pay the cost of the joint increase and improvement of the facilities of Water Districts 3 and Water Districts 4, each in the town of Rotterdam, Schenectady County, New York. Okay, I'm sorry. I should have done it in the okay. Any discussion? You can discuss it just then. <laughs> Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Motion by Mr. Dotson. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Mastriani on the question. 
clerk will call the roll. Mr. Dawson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. Mrs. Gallucci? Yes. Mr. Schwab? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Five yes. Okay. This yes. time. Yes. yes. Uh, again, uh, <clears throat> we need to just void uh, the previous resolution that was uh, approved at the Rider Dam Junction meeting. And um, this, this resolution would be the correct mm -hmm. one for the record. Okay. Next resolution is 219 of the year 2024. The clerk will read. To authorize an agreement with New York Class Investment <coughs> Program. Is there any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. A motion by Mr. Dodson. Do I have a second? I'll second. I heard, uh, first. Yeah, I heard Mr. Shaw first. Mm -hmm. okay. On the question. Who seconded? I'm sorry. Well, Ryan. Ryan. Thank you. Um, any, I, I mean, I'm sorry. On the question. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Dodson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. Mrs. Gallucci? Yes. Mr. Schwab? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. I guess. Resolution passes. Sorry, I got the bed really quick. <laughs> <coughs> You're doing well in Yes. Considering. All right. And that concludes our resolutions for this evening. We'll now move to liaison reports. Do any of the board members have anything they wish to say under liaison? Okay. Do any of the board members have anything they wish to say under miscellaneous? Okay. <coughs> well, that concludes our business for tonight. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make the motion. Okay, motion by Mr. Dodson. Do I have a second? I'll, I'll second the motion. Second by Mr. Dodson. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 So the meeting is adjourned. Thank you for coming. Thank you.